We believe that all faith traditions have something to teach us about how God is working in the world and in our lives. So we're exploring Turkey and hopefully learning to understand each other and even God better for having spent time to listen, learn, and be amazed. The people have a benefactor, that's Artemis, and we give that goddess honors, and then in return she gives us benefaction, benefits. But there are a variety of ways in which you could show honor to the gods. So one that we'd be familiar with is prayer, very common. You see this in inscriptions all the time. You offer a prayer to the divine, where you invoke them, praise them, and then tell them what you need and ask for it, right? Another form of honor that we see less of today would be offerings. Um, uh, and offerings comprised innumerable things. Flowers could be offerings, wine could be offerings, grain could be offerings. The most famous would be animal sacrifice, blood, blood sacrifice. This is the form of honor par excellence. This is what all gods love, is when you sacrifice a domesticated animal to them, and then afterwards, as a people, you feast, right? So you can see now why honoring the gods, it's not just between an individual and the deity. This is always communal. It's one of the differences between modern, what we call religion, and ancient, practice, which is it's necessarily communal, it's civic. Groups of people coming together, slaughtering this animal, and then the fumes go up to the deity and we then eat together. And this is one of the honors that we give to the gods, and then the god will give us rain, or give us protection from barbarians, or, or whatever needs we may have as a, as a city. So you talked about the Temple of Artemis in Ephesus as sort of those one of those must-see places if you're someone who could travel. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how, what the observances were or how people would visit that, what they would, mm. was it just to see? Was that the place of the sacrifices? Mm. What happened? Yeah, and one thing you'll note is every site, every, every, especially every major site has been archeologically excavated and mm. each is gonna have practices particular to it, right? There is no sort of handbook in the Greek and Roman world about how to do what, and uh -huh. there's not, not correlated sort of, <laughs> sort of practices. But broadly speaking, you would expect to see and do a variety of things. One, this is the place of the deity, right? So this is a site of pilgrimage, you know, so whether you're in Ephesus or if you're a visitor wanting to come to Ephesus, this is a place to be closer to the divine. So there's going to be divine. a giant statue. There could be a statue, that's right. Yeah, a statue there. And I mean, it's majestic, right? Imagine 60 foot tall columns yeah. and you're used to just, you know, being in a small village. I mean, this is something divine, mm. magnificent fills you with awe. It's a place now to say prayers, make vows, you know, help me with this God, and I vow that I will come back and I'll carve you a statue. I vow that I will buy a pig and sacrifice it to you. Mm. One thing we didn't talk about is the practice of divination, trying to find out the will of the mm. God. Certain temples were thought, you know, to be places where you, you get closer to the site of the divine, you could maybe seek the divine will, but also as a place of sightseeing. This could be a place to go and just enjoy it. There's gonna be more food there. There's gonna be commercial interest there. You're gonna have people with uh, interesting wares to sell at a site like that. This is gonna be a place to bring your family and you're gonna eat new foods and try new things and have a good experience. It's gonna be an amazing civic site. Each place will have a religious calendar where you'll have festivals, where the temple will play a role in how those festivals are playing out with processions. And in Ephesus, for example, they had a whole month dedicated to Artemis. And we have inscriptions that say, in this month, we are not gonna do any work. No work for the whole month. There'll be some sort of public <laughs> service that's, that's happening. But for the most part, this is a declaration saying, we dedicate this whole month to Artemis athletic games, sacrifices, feasts, meals. We're getting together, we're bringing our city together to pay honors to the divine. The temple's gonna be a, a massive site where these activities are happening. The sense I get looking at the ancient evidence is that almost it seems almost universally to be an ancient person, the world was inhabited by gods. Gods, mm -hmm. the divine is everywhere. I mean, and in places that as moderns we don't, we can't even imagine. Not only the high pantheon of gods of Zeus and Apollo and then these localized versions, you know, Artemis of Ephesia, but the sea as mm. a form of the divine, the sun, the moon, rivers. You've got household gods, you've got gods of the market. And the sense I get is that all humans recognize that this is just part of what it means to be a human is having good relationships with one another and with the varieties in the divine realm. Join us at the Crossroads of Faith, 
a special series Sunday on BYU Radio and the In Good Faith podcast 